one of the reasons why I was all on in the Ravens is obviously I believe in Lamar Jackson, and Lamar was airmailing a lot uh, yesterday, and um, the Ravens lost in Kansas City. I all know, I know that, but this is the Ravens' division to win and lose. I and I'm I've been proven correct through the first three weeks. I think the Ravens win this. We'll see what happens next week. They could make this an easy romp with a win next week. And it's a long season, I understand. But my concern about the Browns was putting all these parts together and everyone's all excited. But the one man at the helm had never done it before. Never been a head coach before. Never called plays for a full season before. And now he's going to do it at the same time. He's got to figure out down and distance and time and timeouts and personnel groups that are being handled on his behalf. Might not be, he might not have his finger fully on that pulse because he's calling the plays and figuring out timeouts and figuring out down and distance. And how will Freddie Kitchens handle all that? And then how will he handle the blowback in games in which he does not execute that to perfection? Well, let's see how the next few days pan out. Because last night on Sunday Night Football, in a winnable game at home, because the defense, to its credit, missing the entire secondary, was picking off Goff three times. They let Cup go crazy, and Cooks have a nice night. But they erased Todd Gurley. And they had this game to win at home. And a third turnover by Goff on a poorly thrown ball that got tipped into the hands of one of the members of of the Browns secondary, gave them one last shot to win it. After Freddie Kitchens in the fourth quarter against the defending NFC champs on a fourth and nine decided to go for it with a draw play. I don't understand that one at all. I understand that the Rams defense is aggressive The Rams defense is fast, and if you can use that against them in a surprise play, I got it. But there's number 13 out there, folks. He is, let me use the phrase, dynamic. Number 13's there now. And if you need a jump ball, nobody better. You need someone to beat somebody off one-on-one when when you think number 99's coming at you, and Aaron Donald is amazing. Holy cow, was that all? Was that a one for the Hall of Fame books last night? And the latest for a third consecutive defensive player of the award to an entry in that resume. You, you, you got the, the best quick game artist out there. Fourth and nine draw play. Okay. And then you've got four cracks at it with your full complement of timeouts. Don't run it once. Don't find Odell Beckham once. None of it works. And then your quarterback is suddenly um, running out of the pocket. I mean, the number of times that Collinsworth said, hey, look, he, he could have stayed in the pocket, and Baker made it uh, more of a scramble play. I, I lost track of that in the second half last night. So Kitchens not being, I guess, directly plugged into Baker Mayfield and being a coach and figuring out what am I doing, it's, it's not easy, folks. It ain't easy. And the Browns are now 0-2 at home, and their next four opponents are teams that came into this week 2-0. Their next four opponents, they've got to take on the Ravens, licking their chops off the loss against Kansas City. Then they've got, after that, a visit to San Francisco on Monday Night Football. Again, George Kittle's going to join us in the middle of hour number two on this show. Then you've got the Seahawks at home. And then at the Patriots, look out. I mean, just look out after a bye week. So here was Kitchens after the game last night. You know, I got to do a better job during the course of the week, putting these guys in better situations and then on game day. So, um, you know, if you're looking to blame somebody, blame me. Don't blame any of our players. Don't blame any of our other coaches. Just blame me because I can take it. All right. So, um, you know, just blame me. Go write your article and say I messed the game up. Go write your article and say it's my fault the, the thing's not looking like it did last year because it is. Accountability is great, and calling it what it is is great because it doesn't look like last year, and he's putting it out there. Hey, I um, can take it. It's on my back. Players in the locker room probably appreciate that the coach is going to take the, the uh, slings and arrows for him. 
That only works a couple times. It really does. It only works a couple times. If it keeps happening, then there's a problem. So right now, he's played deep. Blame it on me. I can take it card. Smart move. I thought that maybe that card would be played by him sometime in the middle of the season because it's Landry, it's Odell, it's Baker Mayfield, it's Chubb. It's just, it's not an easy gig. It's not simple. And that's why I'm concerned about the Browns. Big time. That was a game they should have won last night, or at least forced into overtime. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.